Hello everyone, Time Rover here and welcome to another Star Citizen video. Today I wanted to take a look at the new concept ship that CIG released last week, the Ares Starfighter by Crusader Industries. In this video we'll try and uh, give a brief overview of the ship in case you're not familiar with it, and then I'll follow it up with a quick analysis of how I believe the ship will perform in its intended role, as well as uh, whether or not it's worth the hefty pledge cost. This will not be a proper ship review though, uh, since all we know at this point is very limited and only what's been disclosed in the ship brochure, as the video is being recorded prior to the ship question and answer. Um, I had hoped to make this video with the question and answer having been released, um, but it took a little longer to be released than I thought, so I'm recording this on the Friday before the Christmas week and I'm currently on my way out of town, so I figured I'd get this out and then we'll just look to update it later on. Uh, but once the ship is fully released, we'll take a deeper dive in a proper ship review. But until then, let's see what we've got so far with the Crusader Industries Ares Starfighter. The Ares is a single seat medium fighter that has been billed as a quote capital ship killer with both variants being said to be rather effective at engaging large and capital ships. It's currently available in two variants. We've got the Ion and the Inferno. Both are $195 war bond if you're using new money or $220 if you're using store credit. There is also a limited time skin uh, available for each variant uh, with the Ion Radiance and Inferno Ember skins currently available during the concept sale. The capital ship killer label attributed to both Ares is due to the ship being literally designed around a giant size 7 fixed weapon that's literally attached to its hull. Each variant comes with a specifically designed weapon with the Ion having a fixed bearing size 7 laser cannon and the Inferno coming with a fixed bearing size 7 ballistic gatling. Many have asked if these weapons will be interchangeable amongst the two variants or downgradable in order to get maybe sort of a gimbaled setup and the answer most likely is going to be no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these weapons are attached to the hull. They're not going to be uh, swappable or replaceable or downgradable, most likely. However, we haven't gotten the Q&A, as I stated before, uh, so we can't say, you know, with a, with a firm definite, uh, but my money would be on no weapon swappable. Uh, so keep that in mind. In addition to their main weapon, each variant will come stock with 16 size 3 missiles, with each having the ability then to change these missiles out later for five, 4 size 5 missiles in game. Both ships will come with medium sized components and are generally rather similar in what they bring, except when it comes to the power plant, cooler, and shield generator slots. The Inferno will have one power plant, two coolers, and two shield generators, whereas the Ion will come with two power plants, three coolers, and three shield generators. The main reason for this is that the Ion's weapon will be consuming far more power and generating far more heat than the Inferno's um, weapon, and with the additional power plant, the Ion will then be able to power an additional shield as well. However, CIG has stated that the Inferno will come with better overall armor, or I guess, you know, more... more... Um, uh, effective armor or something like that uh, but there's you know to compensate for this one less shield but only time will tell uh, if this ultimately plays that pays out and we're still not sure what the the armor situation is we'll have to wait for the Q&A for that uh, the other reason for this difference is that the Inferno does need space to carry ballistic ammo, so the area vacated by these extra components uh, on the Inferno will instead be used to house its ammo, which we can expect to be fairly large given that the brochure states um, its weapon can fire 1900 rounds per minute, so we'll, we'll just have to wait and see how much actual ammo it carries, but hopefully it's quite a bit. Speaking of interior space... Each variant will lack any habitable area or interior cab. Being a single seat ship, we did not expect, or at least I didn't expect either variant to come with any interior facilities such as a bed, uh, despite some having suggested that it was advertised as a long range medium fighter. I believe the confusion is more or less related to the language used in the brochure. Uh, the way I read it uh, was that the ship can go out, that the ship was not necessarily a long duration ship but rather that it could engage targets from farther away than most ships of its size, meaning that their weapons, its weapons will have further range. We'll get further clarification of this, though, uh, when the Q&A comes out. But yeah, I don't think this ship was ever intended to have facilities for long-duration flights, but we'll see. 
Overall, I think this ship is quite cool, and I especially like the look of it. I've been a fan of Crusader um, basically since I saw the Mercury Star Runner, and I was really excited when I heard CIG was releasing another ship by that manufacturer. Uh, I've seen a lot of people worrying, um, mainly from capital ship owners, that this ship is like going to be OP, and oh my gosh, it's going to like crush all capital ships. Uh, but honestly, neither variant is going to be able to solo a capital ship. Um, the only, you know, chance of it, you know, being a worry to a certain capital ship would be if, you know, a group of Ares in a fleet uh, engage that capital ship, then you're probably going to have a rough day. Each variant is designed to fill a specific role, with the Ion being better at leading a pack and engaging a large capital ship from afar to disable their shields while the Infernos go in uh, to chip away at its armor with you know, their unrelenting ballistic fire. So in terms of capital ship engagement, these two variants are meant to work sort of in tandem to live up to that capital ship killer name. Uh, personally though, my favorite would have to be the Inferno because I just find it more, more likely to be, uh, more soloable, uh, of the two variants. In fact, the brochure even goes uh, so far as to label it as a solo stalker. Uh, but what this means is still up in the air. Uh, we'll hopefully have a little bit more, uh, clarification on that, uh, when the Q and A goes, goes live. Although I do think both ships will be able to engage, uh, in solo play, into some degree uh, against medium to large ships, the Inferno specifically, I think, will be the better, the bigger threat um, to those medium and large ships because of its heavier armor and ballistic firing. <clears throat> I find that the Inferno is meant to be a sort of in the thick of things more so than the Ion. And while neither are really dogfighters, I do see the Inferno probably doing a little bit better against smaller fighters on its own than the Ion because of that Gat Gatling gun. Uh, that weapon should have an easier chance uh, to sort of even just hit a, a smaller ship than the slower rate of the Ion's laser cannon. But, you know, only time will tell if this turns out to be true, though. Um, but if you are someone looking at these two ships with the goal of, you know, maybe going toe to toe with something like a, a Freelancer Miss or or similar size gunship, then I would probably recommend the Inferno. But if you're someone who plans to lead a group of other fighters or a group of uh, you know Ares against large to capital ships, then, you know, the Ion probably would be better for you. In the end, I have typically avoided recommending um, to anyone to purchase ships that cost as much as the Ares does for a number of reasons. However, if you have the disposable income, then I say go for it because it's a cool looking gun with a ship around it uh, that makes it unique among ships currently in game or in development. That being said, remember that being a concept ship, there's no telling what this ship will ultimately become or when it will be available in game. Personally, I'm hopeful that it will come sooner rather than later, <clears throat> given that we know a mission involving a capital ship is on the horizon. But these are only rumors and nothing has been confirmed. We should know more about its status uh, once the Q&A is released, though, as always. Uh, remember that you don't need to buy anything besides a $45 um, starter pack to play Star Citizen. And at least at the time of making this video, there are even discounted holiday starter packs available. So keep that in mind. Particularly, all ships will eventually be available in game with some uh, ships already available to rent and purchase with in-game credits. So you can wait until the day the Ares joins that list if you want. But anyway, that's all for this video, and I'll try to put out an update once we get the Q&A and look for a, a proper review in the future when this ship becomes available in-game. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this brief look at the Ares Starfighter, and if you did, then consider hitting that like button, and if you're looking to purchase your first game package or ship, then make sure to use the referral code in the description below or in the top right hand of the screen to receive 5,000 uh, extra in-game credits. As always, if you want to see more content, then I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter at TimeRover to stay up to date on the releases. Otherwise, thank you, and we'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.